What is good YouTube? It is your boy Anime Double Hunter and today I will be reviewing the magnificent emotional depressing one shot called Look Back by Tatsuki Fujimoto. Now Fujimoto is one of my favorite mangaka of all time like I absolutely love his storytelling, I love his art like it's amazing. I think it's some of the best art I've seen by a mangaka and I think he has some of the best art in general if I'm being honest. But one thing about Fujimoto is I feel like he never just quite fails to break our hearts. Like I think that's where his he is most skilled in. I mean, do I have to bring up snow? Fujimoto never fails to break our hearts and every work of art he makes, I guarantee you'll be depressed by the time you finish that. But guess what? We still read it. Man, this guy just loves putting us in our bag. Before I begin the review, I'd like to say welcome to my new audience. Here on this channel, I cover all sorts of content ranging from weekly reviews to character explain videos to ability explain videos to more. So if you want all that fun stuff coming straight to your feed, all you have to do is hit the subscribe button and turn on post notifications. That simple. Drop a like if you end up enjoying the review and comment down below the part of the one shot that made you most sad yes made you sad <laughs> let's get on with the review so the one shot look back is about a young girl named fujino who aspires to be a mangaka fujino manga one shots have been featured in several school papers and has been praised by the entire school so it's safe to say she's pretty talented one day the teacher asked fujino if she could turn in one of her manga strips to a student by the name of kiyomoto who happens to be in another class and is unable to come to school but wants to try drawing manga after being a little cocky and calling her a scary cat she says yes one day Fujino takes a look at the school paper and sees a manga panel side by side next to her manga and then she sees the truant kid Kiyomoto's art and she is blown away. She says her art looks like pro level art and it's during this moment a student in the class points out how average Fujino's art looks in comparison to Kiyomoto. This really bums out Fujino because usually she is used to being praised for her art but she doesn't stay down forever she uses her anger and sadness to fuel her to get better at drawing. Which is really nice to see. There are two kinds of people in the world. People who get mad at criticism and pout all day. And there are others who use criticism as a chance to improve themselves. And those are the greats. Fujino Googles tips on how to improve art, purchases books, and begins to work. Fujimoto then shows us several beautiful panels of Fujino drawing. Like these panels are so simple but like the detail and the beauty is just crazy. It never fails to blow me away. Fujino continues to draw, trying her best to improve her skills. And now it's the end of the school year. And a student approaches Fujino. She asks her what she draw. And Fujino says the human skeleton. The girl then proceeds to let her know that they are going to be 6th graders next school year and Fujino just brushes her off like yeah mm -hmm, don't matter. She then asks her if she plans on drawing. Fujino of course says yes and all honesty I don't know what she expected for Fujino to tell her but okay. The girl then goes on to drop the bomb. She says her other friends couldn't build the courage to say this but they feel like she might be getting too old for drawing. She then goes on to add they feel like Fujino has been ghosting them. She never plays with them. Even when they are together she never talks to them. All she does is draw. She then asks if she draws in middle school people think she is a creepy otaku. The thing I liked about this conversation was that it felt so real. Like the type of thing you see in a 4th grade classroom. You know kids say dumb shit all the time. Not just kids but people in general. But all you can say is fuck them and keep grinding. Fujino doesn't mind what she says and continues to draw. She goes home and continues to draw but right out of nowhere her sister ends up barging into her room to let her know her mom told her to take a bath. Fujino upset of course tells her to knock before she comes in. Sister says of course but then she, she again drops the bomb on Fujino. She asks her how long are you going to keep drawing manga. Mind you this is the second time someone asked her this question and of course she's a kid so of course other people's opinions is gonna affect her. Her sister then asks her mom and dad are worried about her. She's always holed up in her room and her test scores are terrible. Fujino then tells her to get out and once her sister leaves she begins to cry. Fujimoto come on man here we go again. It's the next day and Fujino is in class and they send her the weekly school paper. It's here we see her one shot side by side with Kiyomoto's. And before I move on I want to talk about Fujino one shot real quick. It was hilarious. They had me weak. The student believes his teacher is his dad. He ends up calling his teacher dad. And when his teacher gets nervous and touches his hair he says to himself since you are my real dad after all. That was funny. <laughs> After Fujino compares her art to Kiyomoto, she says she gives up. Now I would have called Fujino jealous or making the wrong decision or something like that. Even though she is kinda jealous and probably threw some shade at her but she's been through a lot recently. She has someone to bring her down by calling her drawing skills average and let's not forget Fujino had a lot of confidence. She was praised by many. She's probably not used to this much criticism especially as a 4th grader. She also had her friend as well as her sister tell her she should stop drawing. Now you could say she needs to toughen up and whatnot, but she's just a 4th grader. At the end of the day, let's be honest, even an adult will start to question themselves and what they're chasing after hearing that much criticism from not only their friends but their family as well. So I definitely understand how Fujino feels. As she passes the weekly paper back, Fujino friend ends up inviting her to hang out after school and surprisingly she says yes. This is when Fujino attempts to put her dream in a box and throw the key away. She stops drawing and creating one shots and starts hanging out with her friends. She starts going to karate class with her younger sister and hanging out with her family. She even tells her mom to throw away her one shots. 
So she's definitely trying to put that dream to a rest, which is honestly quite sad. Fast forward is graduation time and on the last day of school, the teacher asked Fujino if she could deliver Kiyomoto's graduation certificate. And Fujino replies and says, why does she have to do it? The teacher says he would do it, but despite her quitting, she was still in the newspaper together with Kiyomoto and he's pretty sure that she'd be happier to receive her certificate from Fujino than a middle-aged man like him. Yeah, that'd be a little bit creepy. Fujino attempts to decline the favor again, but her teacher asks her to please pull off this last favor for him, and so she does. Fujino ends up going to Kiyomoto's house, and when she knocks, no one answers at first. Fujino gets ready to leave her certificate outside, but she later realizes the door is open, and so she enters Kiyomoto's house. Weird, I mean, she, she could be a serial killer for crying out loud. Just kidding, she's only like 11. Fujino ends up walking to Kiyomoto's door, and she sees her own manga strips. When she picks up her strips, it accidentally slips out of her hand and into Kiyomoto's room. She gets nervous and runs out. As she runs out, she screams, I'll just leave your certificate here. Bye. As she starts to walk home, Kiyomoto runs out and catches her. It's here we learn how much Kiyomoto actually enjoys Fujino's manga strips. She tells Fujino how much of a big fan she is, how she reads her strips every week, how she is a huge fan of hers, how she's been reading her strips since like third grade, and she even asks her for an autograph, to which Fujino signs her back. She also lets Fujino know that she recognized how great her art and storyteller were improving. And this conversation actually was a huge moment in the one shot because this is the reason why Fujino decided to pursue being a mangaka again but Kiyomoto asked her this big question you're a manga genius so why'd you stop drawing strips in sixth grade Fujino then comes up with a line says she's actually working on something big for a manga award and so she quit doing school papers so she can work towards that and Kiyomoto totally buys the whole thing she tells Fujino I want to see I want to see I want to see but Fujino says the idea is still only in her head although she has the whole thing planned out but she has yet to put it on paper but she does promise Kiyomoto when it's finished she will let her read it it begins to rain and Fujino heads out Fujino is so happy as she has home she begins to dance you could definitely tell Fujino powers are back when she gets home she doesn't even dry up or change her wet clothes she gets home and immediately starts drawing she then goes back into her drawing zone we then see a panel of Fujino in school isolated from the other students sitting by herself and drawing you can see how much Kiyomoto has motivated her to continue chasing her dream awesome to see and if we're being real Kiyomoto has been motivating her before she actually even met her but moving on Fujino comes home and Kiyomoto is home as well so it appears time has passed they're both a little bit older and it kind of appears they grew closer. Fujino catches Kiyomoto drawing, she asks her if she's still here and did she finish the background. Kiyomoto says, uh huh, she isn't going to school, it's a piece of cake. Fujino then says it feels like they'll never finish all 45 pages and Kiyomoto says she agrees. It felt like they were drawing non-stop and I totally felt them when they said that. Whenever I'm working on a huge video or writing a long script, it sometimes feels like I'll never get to the end because it feels like I've been writing or editing for several hours and I'm nowhere close to done. Drop a like if you ever been there. When I see panels of Fujino and Kiyomoto constantly working and it seems like they became a duo. Fujino writes a story and Kiyomoto does the drawing. And another thing I want to point out is how simplistic these panels are yet sophisticated at the same time i'm telling you guys i can go all day about fujimoto's art i know i'm all over the place but fujimoto's art is so beautiful i just had to point that out fujino and kiyomoto eventually get recognized and end up having a meeting with shueisha the man who works at shueisha is impressed and he ends up giving them a ton of money and an honorable mention for their one shot fujino and kiyomoto then travel through the snow to get to a local 7-eleven fujimoto come on now you know how we feel about the snow once they reach the convenience store they see that their one shot is placed in honorable mentions mind you they are only 13 years old both fujimoto Fujino and Kiyomoto open up a bank account and Fujino ends up taking out 100,000 yen, which is $900. Kiyomoto then jokes with her and says you could buy a house with that and Fujino asks her if she wants to, which was quite funny. Fujino then takes Kiyomoto out on a tree and the two go on and have a blast. They eat ice cream, go to see a movie. The movie scene actually reminded me of Chainsaw Man when Maki and Denji went to the movies. Nice Fujimoto. They go out to eat and they end their day off at a bookstore. On the way home, Kiyomoto thanks for her for treating her and she says something very important. She tells Fujino she's glad she came out of her room and she also reveals the truth that she was scared to go outside and she had also stopped going to school because she was scared of people but she had a really great time today. I really enjoyed this part of Kiyomoto telling us about, a little bit more about herself but I wish we found out why she was so scared I mean considering she is a kid she could just really be a shy person or she might have a social anxiety disorder but like it would have been nice to like get a little bit of a backstory but I, I still like it eyes away. See this is why I like this one shot so much man it just felt so real. Kiyomoto then goes on to ask she only drew because she had nothing to do at home but she's happy she started drawing and then she thanks Fujino once again for bringing her out. Fujino then jokes with her and tells her that she can thank her with 100,000 yen. The two then continue to work on manga. Fujino does a story and Kiyomoto helps her out with the art. We see these cool panels of them together at the beach, at home, outside at the aquarium. And that picture of the aquarium reminded me of the one of the one covered panel with Aki, Denji, and Power as kids at the aquarium. I absolutely love that wallpaper. I mean cover page. Before we move on, another thing that really caught my eye was when Kiyomoto picked up the book and she was looking at a city. Which reminded me of the day the Gundam 
double hit. And now I also saw the rainy booth and that reminded me of one of my favorite moments in all of Chainsaw Man where Riza and Denji had met. Just want to throw that out there. As time passes, eventually Fujino and Kiyomoto get serialized. We actually get to see this meeting. Fujino actually sounds kind of shocked when she hears the news. The man there at the meeting tells them, the editor chief wants to let you give it a spin after you graduate high school. You have seven one shots published by the age 17. And honestly, this is a little late in coming. Fujino is really happy and excited, but Kiyomoto doesn't look as happy. They both head home and on the way home, Kiyomoto ends up dropping a bomb. She lets Fujino know that she doesn't want to go to art school and she can't help with the serialization. Fujino asks her where is this coming from and she attempts to brush it off. She tells Kiyomoto, well, whatever, why not? All you do is draw background so she'll have her assistant handle that. Fujino then goes on to say, but going to art school is pointless, you know. There are zero prospects for art degrees. Kiyomoto acknowledges that and tells her that she knows. Fujino then asks she'll have to talk to a lot of strangers and Kiyomoto says she'll push herself. Fujino then adds that she sticks with her, everything will fall into place. The two then get into their first fight. Kiyomoto tells her she wants to stop relying on her and become independent. Fujino then says it'll be so boring, I guarantee you. And you can look at Fujino's face and you can tell she doesn't want Kiyomoto to leave. Kiyomoto says no it won't. Fujino says it totally will be. Not to mention there's no way you can handle Kyle's life on your own. Kiyomoto nervously says, I can too, I'll learn to. Fujino then says, you can't do it, you're so shy, you can't even speak to the cashier at the convenience store. Kiyomoto then tells her, I'll practice. Fujino then backfires with, there's no way you'll ever pull it off. Kiyomoto then says, but... Fujino says, but what? Kiyomoto says she wants to become a better artist. Now this argument was so intense and real. It was like their first huge fight. You could tell they both didn't actually want to separate from each other. Fujino was looking for all the reasons as to why Kiyomoto shouldn't leave instead of encouraging her, which wasn't right. But at the same time, you could tell Fujino really wants Kiyomoto to stay. She loves working with her and she wants to go as far as she can with her as Kiyomoto as her partner. But you know, this sudden change caused her to panic, which you know, I totally understand. This man Fujimoto, come on bro. I respect Kiyomoto for coming out right and saying she wants to be independent considering she didn't know how Fujino was going to respond and despite hearing all the reasons she shouldn't go she still decided to stand by her decision. This was probably the biggest moment of the one shot because after this they part ways. We see in the next panel Fujino is older her hair is longer and in all honesty I thought this was Kiyomoto at first but yeah Fujino is drawing. She works for Shueisha now and she's serialized and the art looks beautiful like oh my goodness Fujimoto come on man you just don't know how to chill with this beautiful art huh. The name of the series Fujino's working on is called Shark Kick and about several volumes have been put out and it's even getting an anime adaptation so Fujino is going places. Let's not forget to mention how much her art has gotten better. Sheesh. It's January 2016 and Fujino is currently in her office. She looks on TV and sees headlines about a massacre at the Yamagata Art School. The first thing she immediately does is attempt to call Kiyomoto but she doesn't answer. She then receives a phone call from her mom and right in the middle of this we see a flashback of Fujino and Kiyomoto walking in the snow. Now you guys know what flashbacks 9 times out of 10 is a death scene following right after or death confirmed after. Fujino says to Kiyomoto what I'm saying is if we got our own manga series I want, it, I want us to have super awesome art. Kiyomoto says to Fujino I'm so slow though I wish I could draw faster. Fujino tells her that's a cinch. Improve your art skills and your speed increases with them. I already plan on boosting my skills. Kiyomoto then says to her then she'll get better at drawing too like you. Fujino says sweet keep your eyes on my back and you'll grow too. We then turn back to the present and Fujino has dropped the phone. We then get a panel of a very depressed Fujino in which we then find out 12 people were found dead and one of those 12 people were Kiyomoto. Fujino is so depressed and her she ends up going on a hiatus. We then turn to Kiyomoto's funeral and man these panels are so depressing and beautiful at the same time it's crazy. I want to point out something I just found out on the subreddit on a Chainsaw Man subreddit. The massacre that took place in Look Back was actually a mirror to the massacre that happened last year at Kiyomoto Animation. RIP to the people who died and shout out to Fujimoto for putting that in there. I just want to throw that out there real quick. Following some time after the funeral, Fujino goes to Kiyomoto's apartment and she picks up one of her manga. When she opens, she sees her old manga strips and at this moment, Fujino puts the blame on herself for Kiyomoto's death. She says she, if she never started drawing, Kiyomoto would have never died and she immediately drops to her knees off of that thought. She then goes on to add, if I hadn't brought her out of her room, she wouldn't have died. She then picks up her drawing and says, wait, why did I draw that? Drawing is completely useless. She then goes on to rip it up and as that happens, she begins to cry. Fujino then fantasizes of a different reality, one in which she drops off the graduation certificate and she and Kiyomoto don't meet. In that fantasy, Kiyomoto ends up going to art school. We also get the awesome panel of Fujino at the door which has a bunch of papers on it mirroring the door Denji always saw in his dream. Just had to bring that up there. Classic man, come on, we gotta bring that up. Back to the fantasy, the same man attempts to proceed with the massacre but this time, I don't know it. Thanks to her awesome yet clumsy karate skills, Fujino defeats the arson in the process of breaking both her legs. I did say clumsy. <laughs> Kiyomoto ends up thanking her for saving her life and asks her for her phone number. 
Fujino tells her no problem and gives her her phone number while at the same time writing her name. Kiyomoto immediately recognizes Fujino's name and she ends up asking her did she use to draw in 4th grade newspapers which Fujino replies and tells her yes. She ends up letting her know that she was a huge fan of her work but before Fujino gets carried out on a stretcher she asks her why she stopped drawing to which Fujino replies she actually picked it up again and when she gets serialized she should become her assistant. Kiyomoto ends up going home and reading Fujino's one shot and the manga strip ends up flying out of her room under the door. We then turn back to the present moment and Fujino is sitting on the floor mourning over her friend's death wishing things were different. Fujino then sees one of Kiyomoto's drawings and is Kiyomoto being protected from a arson by Fujino. Fujino walks into Kiyomoto's room and sees her volumes of Shark Kick Fujino series. She also sees a Shonen Jump survey and she also sees the sweater she signed for Kiyomoto when they first met as kids. We then get a flashback of Fujino and Kiyomoto. Fujino tells Kiyomoto, you know to begin with I don't even like drawing. Manga is not fun, the entire process is a hassle, it's super unglamorous too. You can draw all day long and still be nowhere finished. Really, I'd be better off sticking to reading manga. I shouldn't draw. Kiyomoto asks her then why you draw? We then see several panels of Fujino and Kiyomoto hanging out together. Which is man, fucking me up man. I swear Fujimoto makes depression shit all the time bro. We then turn back to the present and Fujino is crying while looking at one of her volumes. And we see a shark charging into battle and that definitely looks like Denji charging into a battle. Probably leaning more towards a Denji and Bean crossover. Like that's how they look if they fuse. <laughs> Fujino then gets up and goes home. The next panel we see Fujino is back in the office getting ready to resume her series. And our final panel is Fujino drawing. I think that's Fujimoto's message of no matter how bad things get, no matter how bad a situation or scenario is, we have to move on because life goes on. We can picture as many fantasies as we want, in the end, we can't leave our current situation and go to that fantasy, which is why you have to accept things and move on, despite how hard it is. Because I had to write a script for this video, I had to reread the one shot several times, so I truly got to dive deep into this one shot. Me saying I love this one shot is an understatement. I can't absolutely wait for Chainsaw Man Part 2. But for the time being, I would like to thank Fujimoto for sharing this wonderful one shot with us. This has to be my favorite one shot that I ever read, and trust me, I read some pretty good one shots. Man, what a one shot. I love the references that he gave us the power one in the first one shot we saw with the girl who looks like power telling her boyfriend to find her when she gets reincarnated. Love that. I love when Fujino and Kiyomoto were walking through the snow. It reminded me of Aki and his little brother walking through the snow when they went to go play when they were kids. Of course, everybody loved the door reference with Denji. The rain and phone booth had, had to be one of my favorite ones. Like I said, one of my favorite moments in Chainsaw Man period was when Denji met Rize. The movie theater reference was cool, but yeah, definitely comment down below your favorite reference in the one shot. Oh yeah, coincidentally, if you take Fuji from Fujino and take Moto from Kiyomoto and put them together, you get Fujimoto, which is dope. I just want to point that out there before I ended the video. On a scale of 1 to 10, comment on hype you are for Chainsaw Man Part 2. Drop a like if you ended up enjoying this review or look back.